Hello and welcome to Code Harvest. This is part 6 of our eLife web series where we show you how to create a function that allows users to add products to their cart and wishlist. Now if you're new here, this is part a part of our step-by-step -step tutorial video on how to create a product page for an e-commerce website using HTML, CSS, and, Jav and JavaScript where we also include UI designs such as sliders, animations, and so on. Now this e-commerce basically sells electronics and the company name we created is eLife. Now due to how long the full tutorial is, we have separated it into different videos and parts. So this is part 6, once again, of the product page tutorial. So you can check out the full playlist in the description and top comment down below. Now we also created a tutorial for the homepage of the website, so the link to that video is in the description down below as well. Now subscribe to Code Harvest and let's get started. Alright, so now we're going to be working on a new section. So the, uh, we have already added the product cards and distributed the spacing equally. So now what we want to do is include a function that will allow the users to click on a hard button in order to add items to their wish list uh, number. So first, as you can see, we have created a comment in JavaScript. So it's two, uh, two slashes and we, we can name it anything that we want to since it is only for us. And in order to help us to know which section this is, uh, what we're doing is we're adding items to our wish list. Now, Next, what we want to do is create a variable. So first we need to use the let uh, keyword to declare that variable as a variable. And then we're going to create, add in the name of the variable that we want to, to have. So first we want to select the span elements, the number, um, uh, the number element that in which the wish list count will be in so that we can, you know, identify how many items have been, have been liked so that we can change the number of the items in the wishlist uh, element accordingly. So we're going to name it wish list link and we're going to use a document to select it and actually sorry this will be called wish list count since this will show the number of items in the wish list and then we're going to use a document and in the doc which is the uh, which is the span element that we created here. So since we're only selecting one element, we have to use pre selector instead of pre selector all. Uh, so now we're going to add in that item. So when we scroll down, we can see in our navigation bar that the span element for the wish list is over here. So the container name in which the span element is in is an ID called wishlist link that we created earlier, and it is a span element. So that is what we're gonna with that information. We're first going to select the container that it is in, which is wishlist link and then the elements that we want to specifically select which is the span element so we should be able to select that element and now we're going to select a, all of the heart buttons so all of the heart buttons and we want to reiterate through all of them so that we can create a function that allows uh, the user to see a change of color in the heart button that they click so in order to do that we first need to know the name of the class in which a heart button is stored in so we have to scroll down or we can also type in heart okay so we can see that it is in the heart button class so it is a class called heart button and with that information we can scroll back up and this time we're going to use query selector all in order to select all of these heart buttons now because it is a class we're going to use an id because we want to select all of these classes that are in the document so and it, we called it something simple which is heart button so now we want to reiterate through all of these heart buttons so that we can be able to identify which item which button was clicked and so we're going to add an event listener just like we did above so right now we're going to use a the for each method so we want to reiterate through the heart buttons array and then inside we're going to add a parameter which will represent the elements that the loop will be currently working on so we're going to name this element uh, button. So something simple, it could be heart button or it could be B or it could be an HP, anything uh, simple for you. And because it is an R function, we need to include an equal sign and the greater than uh, character. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to add an event listener for each button so that we can identify, so that we can check and see what, uh, what button was clicked so that we can change the color of and the uh, properties of that heart button. So we're going to click go and we're going to write button and we want to add an event listener. So we're going to add an event listener, the event listener method. So now um, in this case, we want to listen for any click. 
So now we're going to type in a parameter called click. So it should identify and should, it should see whether the button, any of these buttons uh, has been clicked. And then we're going to add an um, arrow uh, function. So again, for event listeners, you are not allowed to add any parameter inside. So we're going to leave that empty and then the equal sign, letter sign and square brackets. Now with that, we're going to add a class. So remember earlier, um, we added a, an active class, but we did not leave it alone because we wanted, to, we wanted to use the active class for other instances. So this is one of the in instances. So now what we want to do is add in a with class list dot add just like we did in this loop. We're going to add in a class that will uh, have the color or the properties in which a hot button will have when a user clicks on a hot button, basically. So we're going to type in the name class list method. What we want to add in the class, I mean in the button, is the class active. And because we know it knows that it is a class, we don't need to add a dot to identify you know, the nature of the element. And now what we want to do is we're not going to add a, we're not going to simply add a class, the active class, because we want a user to be able to click on a hard button, it should turn red. And when they click on it again, it should turn back to um, gray. So uh, we could either go with add and then we can add an if statement to see if a class, if a button has the active class added, then you want to go even longer. We could just add this um, method called toggle. So, all right, so now the uh, button is able, I mean, the toggle property is able to identify for us whether the button has the uh, active class added. So now we're going to create the properties of the active class. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to search for our SVG, which is right here, the hard button SVG. So what we want to do is copy this whole thing and paste it below. And we want to make sure that uh, the property that we're going to add, which is a red stroke and a red fill, is only in uh, the uh, items, I mean the hot buttons, that have the active class. So if it has the active class, then it should turn red. So we're going to change the stroke and the fill to red. So the stroke is the outline and the fill is uh, basically like kind of like the background color of the SVG or what's inside the SVG. So now when we click on a hard button, it, you can see that it changes from red. If we click it again, that means the active class has been removed. When we click it again, it's added, removed, added, removed. And we can do it for other hot buttons as well at the same time. So now what we want to do is work on the number of items in that wish list. So what we're going to do is select the variable itself, and then inside the variable we want to, in order to you know, know access the item or the value of that span element, which is zero, um, we want to add in a property called inner HTML, which will do it for us, and it will return the value that is inside the span element of the wishlist item or element. So now what we want to do is we want to use the document and throughout the whole document what we want to do is search all over for how many uh, items have the red color or has the active class basically. Those every hot button that has the active class or every product card that has the active class we want to basically select all of those items turn that into an array and then we want to know the length of that array and through that we can basically um, add in the number of items based on the length of that array that it returns. So now we're going to use, uh, we're going to include the class which is the hot button class and specifically we also did it before previously but now this time we want to select the hot buttons with the active class so we're going to use, we're going to add in um, the active class in the query. So we don't want to get the elements itself, we don't want the elements, we don't want the whole array, but we want to know the number of items in that array, so the number of items that have been activated. So we're going to click on dot .length, I mean type in the property dot .length, so this will return the, uh, the elements, the number of elements in that array, and we're going to end that. So now when we reload this, and when we click on a hard button, you can see that the in our, that the HTML value has changed from 0 to 1. When we add another one, it turns from 0 to 2, 3, 4. And if we want to remove that, we can also see that the number reduces as well. All right, so now we're done with adding the items to our wish list. So when we click on a hard button, 
uh, which is basically like adding a link to adding an item to a wish list. We can see that the items that are shown in the wish list counter is uh, it changes. So now we're going to be working on we're going to be working on adding items to our wish uh, to our cart list. So we're going to add another comment since this is a different function, and we're going to call it adding items to cart. So first of all, we're going to do the same exact thing that we did for this, but we're going to make a few changes. Uh, so first we're going to select the counter, which is the span element here. So when you scroll down and check our navigation bar, we can see that the span element is inside an ID called cart link. So basically we're going to create a variable and we're going to call it cart count. And in here we want the document to basically search for uh, the span element that is inside the cart link. And you can end that line with a semicolon. And then next, we want to select all of the items, all of the product cards uh, buttons. So all of these blue buttons, because we named this class blue button. But specifically, there are so many blue buttons because we've used blue buttons for um, in, in the top part of the web page. We've used it in the top banner, um, and we're going to use it in other areas. So specifically, there is a container in which the blue button is in. So we're going to scroll down. And out of here, we can see that uh, we can use the product card container. We can use the product card as our container, or we could use the product text container in order to select the specific button. But let's go with product card since the, the only button that the product card has, has is the add to card button. So we're going to select the product card as our container and then select the blue button. So we're going to create a, an array name and we're just going to call it um, card buttons. Now, since we're going to collect a number of elements, we're going to use query selector all. And with this, we specifically want all of the product cards, uh, I mean, all of the buttons that are in the product card. So first, we're going to um, include the name of the container that it is in and then the button itself, which is the blue button. Now, we're going to reiterate through these cart buttons, all of these cart buttons uh, in the for each loop. So basically, I'm just going to copy this because it's going to be the same thing, but we're going to add uh, a few lines. So we're going to change this to cart buttons instead. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to change the um, wish list count. So we don't want the, we do not want to select all of the wish list items, but the art cart items in this section. So we're going to change this to card count and then we're going to change this one here to blue button. However, since there are a lot of blue buttons, we only want the blue button specifically in the product card. So we're also going to include product card in the query. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to change the text of the button. So we want to change it from add to cart to remove. So we're going to create a new line and in here we're going to create an if statement. So we want to know if the button has been clicked and whether if it has been clicked, then whether the text is add to cart, then we want to change from add to cart to remove. If it's removed, then we want to change from remove to add to cart. I'm also going to check for any error just in case. So first, let's create the one for if we see an, if the uh, button has the add to cart as its string value. So in order to get its string value, just like here, we use that inner HTML. So in order to get the string value for the blue button, we need to use inner HTML here as well. So we're going to go with button dot inner HTML and we want to know so we use three equal signs typically two equal signs are used but when we want to use three because it basically makes sure it makes sure that um, the value that we get is accurate and precise so we want to make sure that the button is string value and uh, we want to check if it's add to cards and if it happens to be add to cards then we want to change that value to remove instead so now we're going to um, copy this whole thing because we're going to type this again and we want to create an else if statement. So if we wanted to end this statement, we would use else, but we want to check again. Uh, so now this time we want to check if the button has the remove uh, string value, if the, if, I mean, if the string value of the button is removed. And if it is, um, then we want to change it to add to cart. And just in case any error occurs, so we're going to end this if statement now, um, we want to make sure that if there are any errors, then we need to, it needs to tell us or we need to know. So we're just going to include a console log to make sure that everything is fine and we can go with error, adding, and we can type in the section name, which is adding items to cart. So that's just in case, um, just, that's just in case the button 
uh, string value returns something else, maybe null or it could be blank. So we want to make sure that it does not return any of those values and, and if it does then it should return this error so that we, so that we don't get confused. Alright, so another thing that we want to make sure is we want to know what value it returned. So in order to know what value it returns, we basically are going to add in the string value which is button in our HTML. So when we click on reload and when we check, we can see that our function is not working. So that means an error probably has occurred. So now we're going to check our console log. So we did right click inspect element. And then here there are two double arrows next to element. And when we click on console, we can see that it returns add to cart. But what it should return, that is a, a string value that we have added in our if statement. So it should you know, work and it should turn to remove. However, we can see that there is spacing around add to cart. So this string value should be placed right next to this uh, string value here. So after error, adding items to cart failed should be right next to it. But it is not, uh, but we can see that there are new lines and there are spaces everywhere. So what we can do is we can use this value called trim. All right, so what this method basically does is it removes any spacing, any extra spacing, or any trailing or leading spacing, as well as any new lines. So, for example, when you click on Add to Cart, once again, you can see that the if statement basically recognizes that the string value of the button says Add to Cart without any spacing, without any new lines, just as it is. So it has changed from Add to Cart to Remove. And when you click on it again, um, it is also able to. So now we want to use this method for the other button values that we added. So two more times. But instead of calling the trim method over and over, we can just create a new variable, store the value in the variable so that we don't have to repeat the or call the trim method three times. So we're going to create a variable called button string and we're going to store in the value of the button without any spacing. We're going to end that line and then we're going to copy this variable and in the three times that the button's string value is needed in. All right, so when we exit the console log, we can you know, reload this page. So when we click on add to cart, we can see that the item, I mean the button string changes from add to cart to remove and also when we click on remove, it changes back to add to cart. And that is because of the if statement. Now, we can also see that the, ad, the, the number of items added in the cart also changes. So when we click, you can see changes from one, two, three, four, and it also decreases. And that is because of the toggle line that we added. And that is because of the line that we added over here. So we selected all of the items that have the active class. And we do not even need to add any CSS properties because the button didn't need any extra styling or it didn't need to change. The only thing that needed to change was the string value, which we changed with JavaScript. All we needed to do was recognize and to test and to be able to detect whether a button has the active class and that is activated when a user clicks on add to cart. All right, and now we are at the end of part six. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, comment down below and subscribe to Code Harvest. Thank you so much for watching. Now see you in part seven of the eLive web series. Goodbye.